Oh, you're back. Well, here we are. This is Brian's video number three. A lot of people have said those paper face masks that the NHS have been issuing, are they useful? No, of course they're not. They're no bloody good at all. Well, they may cut the risk down by, say, 5%, but you need hermetically sealed masks, and at the moment those are in desperately short supply. So, how can you catch it now? Well, you're not going to avoid catching it with a paper mask. You're not going to avoid catching it by freezing anything. Remember, we freeze germs and viruses to preserve them, so freezing won't do any good at all. You can also catch it by the expedient of being in hospital with something else. There's a case to be made for all the COVID-19 patients to go to the special new hospitals. Putting them in ordinary hospitals means that people already ill are exposed to a second hazard, and that makes no sense at all. There is a comparison, you know, to help us keep this in proportion, with the influenza epidemic that followed World War I. In 1918, more people died from the flu epidemic than had died in the whole of the war. We all know that statistic, but let's put it in proportion. The world's population in 1918 was 1 1.8 billion. The number of people who caught the flu was 500 million. So for every two people who caught it, there were seven who didn't. So there isn't any reason to be unduly frightened. The chances are you're not going to catch this. And if you do catch it, the chances are you are not going to die. So how do you catch it? One method of transmission is, of course, contact, which is why we were always told we must be sure we wash our hands. You shouldn't shake hands with people, though not everybody, I seem to recall, has followed that advice. I, I, I'm shaking hands continuously. I was, at a, I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody, uh, you'll be pleased to know. And, and indeed, neither should you touch your face unnecessarily. But the washing is a bit of a... That's a bit of a red herring. It's a bit of a side issue. The main way in which this virus is spread is through the air. Now, it has been said that you should keep two metres apart from anybody else, and that's because in the still air of a laboratory, droplets normally spread about two metres, seven feet or so, around you. But it's a ridiculous thing to tell people because it depends on how the air is moving. If there is a drift of air from right to left, then anybody downwind of you is going to catch it if they're many, many metres away. And somebody half a metre upstream is unlikely to catch it. Not only that, but you have to remember that most of these uh, how far can you go experiments have been based on bacteria in droplets of spittle. Now, bacteria are a lot larger than viruses. If you picture the COVID-19 virus, for example, as a Malteser, then a typical bacterium, like the Staphylococcus that you will find causing boils or sometimes gives you a sore throat, is the size of a football. So a virus is very, very tiny. And I have no doubt that viruses can sit in aerosols suspended for a very, very long time. It should also be said that COVID-19 is a really stupid name. This is SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. It is SARS Mark II. Do you remember SARS in 2003? Well, this modern virus has 80% of the same genes. It is SARS Mark II, not covid now, if you think back to SARS, which peaked in 2003, altogether, SARS infected 8,000 people. It killed 774. Now, the point about the new version of SARS, SARS coronavirus 02, SARS-CoV-2, as virologists call it, is that it is far less lethal, but far more infectious. It is 10 times less likely to kill you than the SARS of 2003, but it's about three times more infectious. And that is why we've run into the problems that we have. One person infected with this COVID-19 can infect, on average, two or three others. Polio or smallpox would infect nine others, which is why they were so incredibly infectious. And if you want the world record for infectivity, then that would be measles. Measles is a disease that still kills people. 
and one person suffering from measles normally infects 15 or 20 others. It's the most infectious virus that we know. By the way, people still insist that measles vaccination is dangerous. Measles vaccination saves an awful lot of lives. And I'll bet those people who've been clamouring, campaigning against vaccination are going to be queuing around the block as soon as there's a vaccination for this new disease. So let's keep it in proportion. If you're old and at risk, someone like me, then you do need to do everything you can to avoid it. But most people are not going to contact the virus. Of those who do, most people are not going to get ill. Of those who are ill, most people will not get seriously unwell. And of those unfortunate enough to end up in hospital, most will not die. This is a virus we need to avoid, but it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm.